Brain Food, Random Stimulation for the Brain. Sometimes you have to make cool stuff to build cool stuff, and this definitely falls into that category. Even a relatively small vacuum former like this in the hands of a novice like me can form moulds around some really quite varied shapes and pick out plenty of detail. You can then cut the moulds out and use them just as they are, or you can cast stuff inside them like I'm doing here with this chocolate and jello. With a little bit of imagination you can make all sorts of cool stuff, like this Samsung gummy phone or this Chokia 3310. It'll even make moulds of quite small objects with remarkable detail. If you think you don't have the tools or skill, you might want to think again. Essentially it's just built from off cuts of wood cut with nothing more than a handsaw and it has a few holes drilled in it. That doesn't mean it's rubbish though and it can create some absolutely fantastic detailed moulds. The built-in guides really help to speed up accurate frame location, producing good quality moulds time after time. You can build it any size you like, but mine's based on A4 size, so that when you don't need it, you can simply fold the frame guides out of the way and slide it onto a bookshelf until you need it again. Using the former is incredibly easy. First, take your plastic sheet and cut it to size if necessary. Then clip it into the wooden frame, making sure you leave the areas near the location pegs free. Insert the nozzle from your vacuum, ram it in nice and tight, and because we'll be using the kitchen oven, I'll just duct tape the form off straight to the worktop. Finally, we can place the frame in the oven or grill. Here I've popped the frame onto some wooden offcuts just to keep the plastic away from the element. All we need to do now is wait. Usually that means waiting until the plastic has sagged slightly, anywhere from half an inch to an inch, and we're good to go. There you go, a really cheap, easy to make vacuum former that works really well but doesn't look like utter junk either. Let's see how it was made. For the top and bottom I'll be using these off cuts of wood, any sort of plywood or MDF will do, no more than a quarter of an inch thick. The side walls are made from some 2 by one and a 4 foot length will make both the former and the handles. Just remember to make sure that your vacuum cleaner will fit inside the 2 by one I'm making mine A4 size, so I'm using some A4 as a template, but you can go virtually as large as you like, depending on your needs. While we're here, we might as well mark the cuts for the two longest walls as well. With the top and bottom now cut to size, sand off any nasty edges and put them to one side. Using the saw as a square, mark some cutting guides. The cuts don't have to be perfect, but it just stops them getting a little bit too crazy. This is a printable template that's available on the website for free, and that allows me to mark the holes for cutting quickly and accurately. But if you want to mark your own, the holes are spaced round about three quarters of an inch apart, and that seems to work pretty well. I'm using an automatic punch to mark the holes, but a firm push with a nail will do exactly the same job. Now because I'm using plywood, it may tend to splinter the top face, so one good tip is to actually run your drill in reverse and that will help to save it biting into the wood. With that done, just sand up the inside and outside of the plate and make sure the holes are nice and clean and we're good to go. To stick the whole thing together, use a nice cheap silicon sealant or cork. I prefer to use this over glue because it's so easy to make any rough gaps airtight, that means you don't have to bother with them later. Some small tacks will really help to hold everything together as we build. With the two sides fixed into position, we can accurately mark the front and rear walls by just offering them into place. And now's a good time to mark around the vacuum nozzle as well. I'm using a jigsaw because it's easy, but if you haven't got one, a coping saw will work just as well. For the frame to hold the plastic, I'm just using another offcut and marking it just a little bit larger than the former. 
This means when it's cut out, the frame will be a half an inch in size all the way around and will pass over the former with a little gap to spare. And while we're here, we'll mark the two four and a half inch frame guides from the remaining two by one. Now everything is cut, sanded and drilled, I'm just going to give it a layer of clear lacquer. It's not necessary for function, it just finishes it off. Lastly, on go the frame guides and that's it, you're pretty much done. I had this old roll of draft proofing tape lying around, so I added some. I don't think it's really necessary, but if your vacuum has low suction, it just may help. And there you go, done. The whole build took just over two hours from start to finish and it produces some really great moulds even for a beginner like me. If you need any additional help I'll have links to the plastic I used in the video on the website along with the printable template if you want it. I hope you enjoyed that little project and if you did I'll see you with something totally different next time. Don't forget to smash like, share or subscribe. Thanks for watching.